Senate, Senate Bill 630. And the patron has arrived, Senator Surville. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. So Senate Bill 630, I'm sorry I wasn't present. Uh, Delegate Murphy and I were working on some firearm bills in the judiciary, and she was sending her aid over, and I thought I didn't need to come, so that's why I didn't come, so I apologize for that. Um, but uh, Senate Bill 630 is basically what's called a right to charge bill. Um, it's been adopted, similar legislation has been adopted in Florida, about four or five other states, to ensure that um, people who own their property, whether it's a, a parking spot in a condo or a, um, a, a driveway in a homeowner association, will have the ability to install electric vehicle charging stations without undue interference by their homeowner association or condo association. Um, I introduced this concept to the Housing Commission over the summer. Housing Commission and I talked about concepts, um, but we ran out of meetings to finalize anything. They sent me to work off to work with the Community Association Institute on legislation, which I've done. They're now okay with this legislation. Nobody's expressed any opposition throughout the process, but basically it just says that HOAs and condo associations can't put any undue burdens on people who are trying to install electric vehicle charging stations either in their parking spot or in their on their property, on the outside of their property. But they can do like... They can tell you you have to put it in a wooden box or something, but they just can't tell you no. Um, with the coming of electric vehicles, I think it's important. And uh, you know, there's, I've, I've had a constituent actually in Prince William County who reached out to me, whose condo association has refused to consider his application in his condo. And he's the one that brought this to my attention, made me aware of the concept in other states. So that's that's why I carried the bill. Members, uh, questions on the bill? Uh, we do have uh, in the queue, Delegate Plum. Chair recognizes Delegate Plum. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, uh, members of the committee, uh, and thanks to Senator Servell for bringing this bill to our attention. Uh, I live in a community that's made up of many uh, associations, mm -hmm. condos, townhouses, uh, single-family houses and associations and so on, and a f progressive community that's very interested in electric vehicles. This can be a real difficult issue to deal with, and I don't think we can leave our communities and our constituents in this situation of having invested in an electric vehicle and then not be able to charge it at home. Now, it turns out that where I live, I can put a plug right on the corner of my house and plug it in, so it hasn't been a problem for me, but I know it's a problem in some other associations. So it would be my hope that uh, recognizing the direction we're going and uh, vehicles and so on, that we would approve the bill. Thank you, Delegate Plum. Chair recognizes Delegate uh, Ayala. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, I have a question for the patron. Um, just reading this, uh, Senator, um, I have some questions. When you talk about undue burden, is this in first my first question, and then I'll ask about undue burden um, on the homeowners. The first question is, has there been other model legislation that or or other associations that have set up parameters in which they can add these stations to their home infrastructure so from what I understand that some of these common areas or what the HOAs govern are the exterior portions of the property not the interior so if you were to add this element to the exterior of the property um, has there been challenges to the homeowner for putting, you know, as we evolve in technology and move these charging stations, or if they don't provide one, has there been either some alternate means of supply for these individual homeowners, or have they been allowed to install these in their home? Uh, well, first of all, with regard to a model, this bill was modeled on Florida law, and we made some changes to make it consistent with what we thought was Virginia law, number one. Mm -hmm. Number two, this law deals with HOAs, condos, and co-ops. The three different types of associations that are out there um, and the condo and co-op provisions are identical. The um, HOA provisions in this bill say that the HOA can only restrict um, design elements on the exterior of a property, mm -hmm. but they cannot put any kind of restrictions on the interior of a property. Part of your question, I think, was premised on the idea that an HOA cannot go inside your house. That's not, that's not accurate. Um, when you join a homeowners association, they can regulate whatever inside or outside your house that they have the authority under the declaration to do. And if the declaration says they can tell you what you can do inside your house, then they can have that authority. So that depends on what your declaration and your specific HOA says. Um, so with respect to this legislation, we were trying to give HOAs and condos a roadmap as the types of things they're allowed to ask about and the types of things they're not. 
and some restrictions on them so they don't propose any undue restrictions. The bigger, biggest problems, I think, arise in the condo and co-op situation because you're dealing, say, for example, in underground parking. There might be some, for example, the, the constituent that reached out to me was in uh, the community of Belmont Bay, which I think you're probably familiar with. Mm -hmm. And his condo association just basically told him we're not going to let you. He, even though he owned his parking spot, parking spot is a limited common element under the condo association mm -hmm. declaration, which he can sell or transfer or rent. They told him he could not install an electric charging spot because they were worried about what it might do to the electrical system or something, which is a bunch of BS. So this makes clear that, that they can't tell you no unless there's some like engineering or um, like safety reason, the demonstrable objective safety reason that would make it a problem. So um, in the homeowner association context, which I think the thrust of your question was mostly aimed at, they could say, for example, you can't put it on a on a post. You have to put it on a, a nice looking PVC. Um, the one I have in my house is some kind of PVC black thing, which is nice. And then it, I could have put it on some pressure treated four by four, but I didn't do it that way. And I could see in some HOAs they would think that would look kind of crappy. So it says they can make like restrictions like that. They can tell you it has to look nice, or you got to put it in a box or something. But I'm not sure if I've completely answered no, no, your no, question. No, 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 no. And uh, follow up, Mr. Chair. Chair recognizes uh, Delegate Ayala. Yes, and when you say undue burdens, is that defined on what that looks like? So if that's... Well, those words actually don't appear in the statute. I mean, that's the that's way I used to sort of globally describe okay. what I thought we were doing. That answers my question. Thank you. Okay. Chair recognizes Delegate Scott. Only thing, uh, thank you, uh, Senator. Um, mm -hmm. uh, Mr. Chair, I want to ask the Senator, um, I just want to be clear. You said that the, uh, the, the advocates... And the uh, stakeholders on this are okay with this bill as it stands. Yeah, on. he's right behind me. Yeah, the community okay. association institute worked on this with me, and we worked on language and refined it further. Okay, that they're okay with it. All okay. right, thank you, Mr. Chairman, members of the committee, trip parent rep representing community associations institute, the homeowners associations. Uh, as you may know, if you've been down here long enough, that uh, Senator Servell and the homeowners associations. Uh, Nine times or 99 times out of 100 don't necessarily agree, but uh, we've done a good job working together on this uh, uh, piece of legislation. It's a good first step. It's a complicated issue, and uh, we appreciate him bringing the legislation to you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, chair recognizes Delegate Weber. Thank you. Mr. Chair, question for the patron? Yep. Um, just so that I kind of understand this in, I guess, English. Um, what the bill does is basically says that if I have a an electric vehicle and I want to install a charging station in the spot that I own in my condo under the reasonable you know restrictions et cetera, I can now do so without having the the condo associations just tell me no you can't do that right okay thank they, you they can say lines thirty four and thirty five sort of say when they can say no Reason, reasonably practicable due to safety risks structural issues or engineering conditions. Thank you. Mr. Chair, I move to report. Second. Uh, before we uh, cast our votes, I did have uh, in the queue one last speaker. Just a second there. We have um, a member, Delegate Helmer, in the queue. Mr. Chair, I'm very happy with us reporting this bill forward. Okay. Okay, hearing uh, no other members, no other questions, we have a motion and a second. Um, Delegate Weber? Okay, I'm sorry, I thought I saw uh, The chair will, um, I'm not sorry, the clerk will record the, the vote on electronic system. All those in favor? Senate Bill 630 reporting. Bill reports 16 -0. Thank you, Great. Senator Servo. Thank you. Appreciate it. To the members, I do not believe that there is any other business before us.